Welcome to the Fix Your Sciatica podcast, where we meet with experts and clients and discuss how to manage your sciatica and low back pain without the use of medications or surgery. I'm your host, Dr. Ashley Mack, and I'm a physical therapist as well as the founder of iFixYourSciatica.com, a go-to resource for pain management. As a physical therapist, I am actually very uh, critical and very picky about the people that I work with when it comes to using self-care services and professions. And massage is one of them. And I remember in school, we learned a little bit about massage and how it can help out with pain. But ultimately, as a physical therapist, I look at the entire body and work on addressing the other movement and other dysfunctions that, uh, that could be present. And so when people come to me asking for just a massage, uh, I would tell them, I'm not a massage therapist. I can help out a little bit, but definitely massage therapists know a lot. And uh, I moved out to California a couple of years ago, and I was having a hard time finding the right massage therapist for me. And today's guest is the gentleman who I actually had the opportunity of getting a massage a few weeks ago. And I was just so blown away about my experience and this 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 gentleman's ability to take care of my needs and help me out. So I thought that today would be a great opportunity to share uh, a story and also showing you listeners or telling you listeners and sharing with you listeners how beneficial massage can be. And we'll get it directly from the source from a super knowledgeable man, uh, Dennis Murphy. So Dennis, thank you so much for hopping on today's episode. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on here, really. Um, it was a pleasure working with you, and it's been pretty cool that, uh, you know, they're meeting other people in this kind of area. So especially, especially I didn't, you know, when we did, when we first met, I didn't realize that you spe spe uh, were so specific about sciatica, because that's actually something that's come up a lot in my career. So that's really cool. Yeah, it's, um, you know, get, getting to this point in sciatica in my career was uh, was a very interesting ride. Um, for you listeners out there, if this is the first time that you've ever heard about this podcast, you can actually check out episode one, which actually talks about how I came about and focusing on sciatica specifically. And the link to that episode will be found in today's episode. So Dennis, tell us a little bit more um, about yourself and how you got into massage and um, share with us like the amazing benefits to to what what you do yeah sure of course um well actually before i was a massage therapist i worked in an office and actually dealt with a lot of the things that you deal with working in an office and sitting in front of a computer all day long and so that kind of got me interested my actual focus when i was doing that kind of work i became the uh, ergonomics expert at my office and so i was d helping people set up their chairs and helping them set up their desks and their keyboards and stuff like that for you know, try and reduce pain because we had a lot, we had a lot of carpal tunnel and then we also had a lot of sciatica and stuff like that. But I wasn't really happy working in just in the office environment anymore. So I was kind of casting around for new career paths. And my father was actually a massage therapist way back in the day. And he was just like, well, maybe you should give massage therapy a try. And, you know, I had gone to spas and stuff. I'd never really thought about it doing seriously any, you know, doing it seriously, but I thought, what the hell? And there was a, school that I went to in Petaluma, a little tiny school. Um, they're not there anymore, unfortunately. I really like that place because there's a couple of there's a couple of bigger massage schools around here, but I was really fortunate to go to the school that I went to. And then yeah, so I went to school at night and then one thing led to another and I became a massage therapist and it's been like almost 14 years now that I've been doing it. So 14 years. That's a that's an amazing career. And and you know things are things are only a beginning. So um, correct me if I'm wrong. I do believe that I think it's like massage therapy is, is a licensed profession. Um, yes, is that correct. Absolutely. Yeah. I was actually fortunate. Um, I graduated the year that they instituted that. So I've had, I got my license straight away. So I knew a lot of older people who had been doing massage forever, but they just do it because they just knew how to do it, but they had no license. And so for a lot of people, it was kind of a, a transition, but luckily when I got started, yeah, we, they had just implement implemented that. So now everybody has to have one, but it wasn't like that for a long time. Very cool. I, I think one one thing that's really interesting uh, about this concept between uh, licensing and not licensing, I mean, with the evolution of what uh, massage therapists, with, with the evolution of knowledge, right? Um, there, there's definitely a lot of things that professions can do. And um, here you are, you know, with this licensure, which I, I always think is really cool. Um, so yeah, awesome. So 
if we're looking at massage, right, there, there's a lot of different types of massage. And I think one of the challenges when it comes to selecting the right type of massage, like, as you said, like most, most massage places are in spas and you go to a spa and you look at it and you're like, man, well, there's like 45 different packages. I don't know which one is for me. You know, there's like Swedish, there's sports, the tissue, there's all these different things. So, uh, you know, let's, if, if we were to, and, you know, for the listeners who are experiencing some sort of pain, like specifically sciatic pain and back pain, what are some types of massages that could be beneficial for, for them that they should be looking for? Sure. I mean, I would say one thing that you're, if you're looking for something really specific like that, you, you know, the, the setting that you're going to, so going to like a chiropractor's office or like a kind of a local massage area, you're probably going to get more specific work than you would going to a spa. And I've worked in both situations over the, my career, you know, I've worked in more clinical settings where, you know, I get to say, see the same people every time. And we're trying to work through a certain issue and everything like that. And then I've also worked in the spas where you're trying to just give somebody a good massage once and you're never going to see them again. And it's, it's a big, I think that's the biggest difference when you're talking about things like deep tissue and sports and Swedish and all that kind of stuff that really generally is more of like a kind of a pressure kind of thing. And also the, like with a sports massage, you're going to be getting a lot more stretching. So if you're having sciatic issues like that, a sports massage is actually a really good idea to go with because they do a lot more active stretching. And there's a technique that we were taught called active release. And there's a couple of active release techniques that will incorporate into a sports massage that can really help with that kind of lower back pain. But um, yeah, so the biggest takeaway I would say is look, look for more smaller focused areas, you know, as opposed to like a bigger like spa. I think when you're when you're looking for that kind of really specific work, I mean, you can find great massage therapists everywhere. It's just the the massage therapists that are working at a, on a spa are really looking are trained to do a one and done kind of deal. And some of these chronic issues, you know, it's going to take a, a couple of sessions. So you're talking about um, let me get this right. I think you're talking about the concept that like there's a difference between like therapeutic massage that would. Uh, occur in maybe like a smaller massage uh, clinic or even like a chiropractor's office or like a wellness center. And then you have like the overall spa massage, which is kind of like you're going in, having a good time. It's like a, a full day type of pampering type of situation. Uh, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I'm not, not, you know, I worked in spas for most of my career and that's, there's a definite place for that, you know, but if you're, if you're looking for more of that therapeutic style, then you're, you're really going to want to look for a wellness center. I think there's a great one up in Santa Rosa, and uh, there's chiropractor's office. I haven't, since I moved down here to Marin, I haven't worked with, I haven't really met any of the chiropractors around here. So I don't know any specific offices around here, but those are the kind of places that you're definitely going to be want to want to look for. And then, you know, you can get a really profound therapeutic massage and they don't necessarily have to be, you know, wailing on your back or your legs or whatever. It doesn't, how, it doesn't all have to be super deep tissue to really get that therapeutic thing. And that's something that I had to learn over the years. When I first got started, you know, I was all about the deep tissue and you just force your way in there and try and break things up. And that can be good. And some people really like that, but that can also lead to excess soreness. And, you know, people can, it can, you can hurt somebody doing that if you're not doing it right. And so finding somebody who's at that pressure level that works best for you and who knows how to work at whatever pressure level you're most comfortable with is also very important. So finding the right massage therapist is key. Yeah. So yeah, finding the right massage therapist is huge. I remember I've, I've, I've gone to many massage clinics and, and had multiple massage therapists and some places were, were okay. Um, and then some places like were like, like, and, and massage therapists like your, yourself, Dennis, I was like, wow, I was really blown away just because you had a really great grasp on the human body and how the human body works. And I think what a lot of people think um, I think where, where a lot of uh, challenges that people face when trying to get a massage is trying is, is not having a full understanding on uh, the benefits on on how massage can help someone, um, whether it be in pain or not feeling so great. So could you share for the listeners a little bit information about the benefits of massage and how that can how they can make people feel better? Oh, absolutely. I mean, just on the surface level, just having a a uh, relaxing massage, you know, you're going to, you're going to just get the benefits from being relaxed. So many people are so 
tense and stressed uh, at their jobs or their life or whatever's going on, you know, even before we get into the actual structural issues in their bodies, just having an hour to relax for is profound benefit all by itself. But then when you get, you know, when you're in the hands of a, a trained massage therapist who can really get in there and start breaking up scar tissue and, you know, muscle fibers and, you know, knots and stuff in your back, that's when you're going to, you're the main concept that you're trying to do when you're doing a therapeutic massage is the fascia in your muscles gets adhe they, they call them adhesions and those are what turn into knots and you know the longer they go the bigger they get and so you're trying to break up those adhesions and then by breaking that up that's going to bring fresh blood into the muscles and it's going to be able to flush out uh the acids and stuff that break up from just working out or doing, you know, that's, you know, the stuff that happens after you have like a hard workout and that stuff can get kind of trapped in your muscles. And so by having a massage, you can promote blood flow to those areas and stuff like that. And that can, you know, obviously lead to lead to relief from whatever issues you have going on. You're absolutely right. The, mo the majority of people that I work with, when they come to me and they're like, man, Ashley, I've tried everything, um, PT, Cairo, pain medications, like different massage and everything. Um, what I, I found the common theme that I've seen with people who come to work with me is that they're, they're extremely stressed out. And the, the concept of massage uh, working with professional, I mean, everything should be kind of calming down, relaxing. I mean, we've had literally the hardest year in, you know, in, in, in modern day history, you know, in 2020 and everyone is wound up and because of our social distancing and everything, like we haven't had human contact. And so when you don't have human contact and you're stressed out, just even the concept of touch or even having, even knowing that someone is there to care for you definitely just calms everything down. And I, I often tell people like the sensation of touch is it, it's so powerful. It's kind of like when you were a child and you were crying and upset and then a, a parent or a friend gave you a hug and that hug actually just released and released all that tension, released all that fear, anxiety and everything. And that's one of the things that I really love about massage itself. Um, and then, I mean, that improved circulation, um, usually uh, folks, sciatica, Sciatica is an, is, is an irritation of the sciatic nerve that runs pretty much all the way from your spine down to your low back. And irritation can be due to a whole bunch of different things. But specifically, if we're talking about uh, nerve irritation, you're also could be depriving that nerve of necessary blood flow, which in essence de deprives it of oxygen. And so when you are getting a therapeutic massage, working with someone like Dennis or another massage therapist that can move your muscles and massage them and take care of the muscles in a way that the circulation improves, what's going to end up happening is that you're going to have restored blood flow to the muscles surrounding the sciatic nerve so that the sciatic nerve can heal and recover, especially as you are moving a little bit more. So there's definitely a lot of really amazing uh, benefits to massage, but let's talk about, I mean, the the, the, the million dollar question that a lot of people ask is like, well, if I have sciatica, what are the muscles? What are the areas that I should be massaging or that people should be massaging? Um, because I think uh, everyone has a you know different preference, but with based on your knowledge and what you've seen, Dennis, and, and, and you being able to feel around with your hands, people who have sciatica, like where are the, some common areas that you would work on uh, for someone who has that? Okay, so you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong, because you're the doctor here, and I only took a little bit of anatomy when I was in school. But from what I was trained, the way that I was trained to deal with sciatica is that you're dealing with the piriformis muscle in the hip joint, and that is what's laying right on top of the sciatic nerve. And so from sitting on your desk all day long, the piriformis muscle is going to get tight, and then that's going to just pinch, pinch the sciatic nerve. And is what, what I was told when I was in school is that they call that bow sciatica because it starts in your hip kind of goes down to your knee that's kind of the first question i ask people when they're asking about hip pain is is it going to go does it go from your hip all the way down to your foot that's real full-blown sciatica or is it going to kind of end right around your knee and that can be a structural thing with a tight piriformis muscle and i can help i can really help with that because like i was talking about before the, the most profound technique that i learned with dealing with that is called active release technique so that's where i'm going to 
put my elbow into the piriformis muscle. And I'm going to actually have you resist me moving your leg. And we're going to use that to kind of stretch out that piriformis muscle, you know, kind of the piriformis is kind of underneath the, the glute muscles, get that stretched out. And if you can get that stretched out, that can release the pressure that's on your sciatic nerve and you might actually have some relief. And that, that was the, those were the techniques that I was trained in. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Piriformis muscle definitely has a huge role uh, in regards to the function and operation of the sciatic nerve because it runs straight through. And especially if you're someone who sits for a long period of time, uh, just overall your glute muscles in general are gonna get really tight. And then if you're looking at um, at the fall, if you're looking at the concept of uh, pelvis position uh, and overall spinal position, uh, the piriformis um, itself can be a specific muscle that could be really addressed. Now, um, and I'm glad you're able to show the various different stretches for these people allows them to really um, not only just get the muscle worked out, but then also put these muscles in, in the in the right positions as well. Um, I, I, for you listeners, if this is your first episode, um, sciatica can actually be caused by many different things. Um, as Dennis said, like the pure form system can have a huge role. You're also looking at um, the the position of the spine too. So uh, other areas of interest that people can be looking at could be the the quadratus lumborum, the QL. Um, but then also uh, for a lot of people, for a lot of you desk sitters, if you sit at the desk a lot, what's going to end up happening is that oftentimes your hip flexors are going to be really tight and it's going to pull your spine into extension. And so when you're standing up, your low back extensors, your QLs are going to be firing. And if your QLs are firing, they could irritate the sciatic nerve at the exit site as well, um, which means that we also, um, I know that for me, uh, whenever I had sciatica pain, I had really tight hip flexors. Also, my hamstrings were really tight and so were my calves. And so I look at the, the positioning. There's a lot of different areas anywhere south of the spine you can also address as well. So I'm a huge fan. I remember going into Dennis's uh I guess we would call it the clinic, right? When I went into your clinic, I was like, yeah, you know, would definitely want to get my calves to be worked on and my, my, the top portions on my quads. And I'll tell you what, when, when Dennis put his hands on the top portion of my quads, I jumped off the table because it was so tender. And so when you look at it, um, there's definitely a lot of areas that people can massage for sciatica, but the key to finding the right positions or the right muscles um, is to actually have the, your massage therapist actually evaluate, uh, look at you and see what muscles are extremely tight or are extremely knotted because those areas will say, this is where we need the most amount of work and love. And then before you know it, you're going to be able to feel a lot looser um, when it comes to that. And, uh, Dennis, I know that you were talking about, I mean, right now, I mean, we're pretty local. If you guys didn't know, Dennis and I are actually neighbors. We found that out the day that I came in to get my massage with him and we live in Marin County, California. So if you are living all throughout the U S or all throughout the world, um, you know, you can work with me virtually because I can guide you through the pain. But when you're working with someone like Dennis or a massage therapist, you you want to have a little bit more of that hands on. However, there's a couple of different ways, like say, for example, if you don't have access to a massage therapist just because you are still not quite comfortable um, meeting with someone in person uh, and that's totally OK. Um, what are some uh, let's see. Dennis, what are some ways that someone can say like massage their muscles uh, outside of the, the use of a massage therapist, if you have any thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when usually when I have somebody that's coming in with that kind of specific issue, there's a couple of stretches that I uh, will recommend. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain it by speaking, but basically what I'll have you do is I'll kind of have you lay on the bed and with your leg kind of hanging off so that you're kind of stretching the piriformis muscle, which is kind of the front of your spine. So if you can get, so you kind of lower your leg off of the bed and kind of do the reverse, kind of do the reverse stretch like that. And then anything that's, anything that kind of focuses on stretching out those hip muscles and those, you know, the lower back muscles and stuff like that. So a lot of like yoga, um, spinal twists, I recommend those a lot. So what is it? The, not the snake, but uh, I can't remember the name of the position, but it's it's like a, the, the active spinal twists, I think, are really important. But then I also one trick that I actually learned and I recommend to a lot of people um, is uh, like a tennis ball or like a racquetball and actually working like so if you're going to be sitting at if you know you're going to be sitting at your desk all day long, then actually having like a racquetball or some kind of harder ball like that to massage the soles of your feet. 
can be really helpful. And actually um, working those muscles at the bottom of your foot can actually have kind of profound influence on uh, the muscles going all the way up your leg. And they were, obviously it's relaxing too, but, um, and then using a, using a ball in the hip joint so you can almost kind of sit on it and try to get that into that hip joint right there and kind of work on those areas. That can be really helpful. And then the tool, if you're going to buy something, I mean, most people have a tennis ball or something around, but if you're going to buy something, the only tool that I ever recommend to people is called a Theracane, it's like a big J-shaped hook. And that, you I mean, I use that on my back all the time, but you know, you can reach around and hook it into your hip like that and actually work on it yourself. And that can be really, really helpful. I love the Theracane. Um, the Theracane was actually developed by, I think like a physical therapist, I don't know, maybe in like the eighties. And the inventor is now retired on their own private island right now. Um, which, cause it's a, it's a really cool thing. So um, if you guys are wanting to look at what that is, it's Theracane, T-H-E-R-A, C-A-N-E, Theracane. So it's a combination of therapy and cane. It's really great. A lot of really cool stuff. So definitely check that out if you are in need of some, some equipment. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of the you know, use of foam rollers too. Um, foam rollers, uh, you can either uh, do a foam roller. Um, some of them are actually made of foam. Some of them are made of plastic with a little bit of cushioning on, on, on it as well. Um, and definitely uh, you can hit some of those hard to reach areas, um, especially when it comes to uh, massaging those muscles. And I actually, Dennis, I'm a huge fan of the fact that you said that once you massage these muscles, uh, you stretch them out and you move. I think one of the, another big hangup that people get is the fact that they, they get a massage and they're feeling so great. And then they, they feel so great and they're like, okay, my pain is relieved. And then they go back to sitting at their desk and, and not moving. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Absolutely. It, it, it really breaks my heart. Cause it's like here, you, it's like, uh, you know, you do, it's like from a fitness standpoint, it's like you did this great, awesome, amazing workout. And then you go across the street to have like pizza and beers and it kind of like negates uh, some of the hard work and the hard work that was done on you. So stretching, moving correctly is going to be really, really, really beneficial because the concept of tight muscles is the fact that they are either being worked excessively um, or they're not being worked enough or they are just in a shortened or lengthened position for a longer period of time. And so it is important for us to be able to implement modalities like massage to help improve the blood flow the mechanics, allowing the tissues to run really well. Uh, Dennis brought up the concept of fascia. And if you, if the fascia is, the, if this is the first time that you ever heard the word fascia, it's a, it's a series of connective tissue that actually runs throughout your entire body. In a way, it kind of connects everything from one to the other. So if you ever go to a clinician or um, even what Dennis said, like, it, you know, if you were to take a tennis ball and massage your feet and everything kind of calms down, um, it's really interesting to see in that there's a, there's a gentleman, his name is Thomas Myers, who wrote this book called Anatomy Trains. And you can literally see the visual tracks from how your big toe can be connected to your left shoulder. It's really interesting, uh, really, really interesting stuff. So um, the link to that book is going to be uh, in the description of today's episode as well. Um, Dennis, I love getting massages. And, 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 uh, and I mean, you being in, in the industry for 14 years, I mean, you enjoy giving them. So, I mean, if we're looking at it, I mean, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of physical therapists and chiropractors out there. And um, I'm gonna, in a future video, I'm going to be talking about how to, how to find the right one. But if we're looking at someone from a massage therapy standpoint, what are some qualities that people should be looking for uh, in a massage therapist to take care of their needs if they're dealing with pain? Well, I think obviously one of the biggest ones is experience, but surprisingly, I mean, I've had lots, of, I used to be the hiring manager at one of the spas that I worked at. So I've worked with a lot of people who are pretty, fairly fresh out of school. And uh, some people, you know, some people are fairly just intuitive and can just, you know, do it. And I think that was something I was kind of wanted to touch on earlier was that like, when you're, when you're giving a massage and you're working on like a tight muscle or something like you might not even realize as a massage therapist that you're doing it, but you're just kind of magnetized to those areas and you end up working on them a little bit more. But when you're looking for a massage therapist, um, I think you're looking for somebody who can kind of gel with what you're, what you're look, you know, 
because not every person is going to work the same. Not every massage therapist the same, just like not everybody is the same. So there's some times when you, the person, you know, your friends might be like, oh, this massage therapist is so great. You know, go get a massage. And then they're just, they just don't work for you. And as a massage therapist, we have to, we deal with that all the time and that you have to know that you're not going to be able to help everybody. So you need to find somebody who works best with you. So that's why when you're looking for somebody that you're going to be working with for a long time, you want to try a couple of different people to make sure that, you know, you're getting the therapy that you want in the, you know, that's something that's really going to be helpful for you. And it's okay to be like, you know, I didn't really like this person. I want to move on. I want to try and find somebody else. You're not going to hurt our feelings because especially at least for us who have been at this, at this for a long time, we know that that's just how it is. And no, you're never going to be able to please everybody. So, and I think another big thing that you really want to look for is somebody that actually is paying attention to what your body, you know, if you're going to have that really good intake and be able to talk about these are my issues and these are the things I kind of want to work on. And then you, it's kind of one of the hallmarks of us that have done a lot of work in the spa is that we're going to try and hit every part of your body every single time, because that's what we're trained to do. But if you can find somebody who can just work on your legs for an hour or an hour and a half, that's, that's great. I mean, that's tough to do for us as a massage therapist to work that specific. So if you can find somebody who does that, that's something else that's really important. I just want to say Dennis is being very humble right now because he says he works off of intuition, which oftentimes when people think intuition that they, they kind of just like feel it. But I just want to give Dennis all the credit with his 14 years of experience with working with people. Yes, it kind of comes second nature. He gravitates towards these areas, but it's with his experience and ability to make connections with the information he gets from his clients, like what he feels he is actually able to make the biggest recommendation in regards to the areas that should be worked. So Dennis, big applause to you, man. Um, I, I really appreciate the work that you do. And the, the concept of paying attention, I remember one of the worst massages that I had was I came in and I was saying, hey, listen, I'm having problems in X, Y, and Z areas. And they said, okay, I'm going to work on a completely different part of your body. Um, 100% negating everything that I just said. And that really disheartened me that made me feel like I wasn't listened to you and a large part of your recovery from sciatica pain whether if you're going with a massage therapist a, a, a doctor an orthopedist a spine doc a physical therapist or chiropractor is is the ability to listen and feel as if you're being heard and so for you guys if you listeners if you feel as if when you are in a clinician what any profession's office, and you feel like you're not being heard, the outcomes of your recovery are actually going to be a lot lower as compared to if you were working with someone who makes you feel as if all your needs and issues are being heard. Um, there's a large part when it comes to pain management that you and your provider are on the same team. And when you are working on this problem together, you're going to have a higher level of trust. You, your anxiety is going to go down. And with a combination of those two, plus the right treatment plan, because when the clinician is listening to your story, listening to your information, they know exactly, they should know exactly what to do and make those changes. Dennis gets his information through his hands. I get my information through all the questions that I ask my patients and based on how they move. And so it is important when you're working with a provider that they ask you questions make you feel heard and understand what you're going through because the reality is no one like, yes, we can say we understand what you're going through. We know that you're going through pain, but how that is affecting your life, how you're improving, how you're, how you're resting, that in itself is going to drive your treatment and your recovery. So being able to communicate it with massage therapists, your physical therapist, your chiropractor, your doctor is going to be key to recovery. Now, um, sorry, that was kind of like my soapbox right there. Um, yeah, let, yeah, let me just, can I just expand on that too for your clients who might be going out to be getting a massage for the first time or something like that? It yeah. is vital that if something doesn't feel right to say something, because I've had so many times when, you know, I might be think I might help be helping somebody. And then afterwards they say like, oh, that didn't really feel that great or something like that. And as much as we are intuitive with our hands and we have a lot of experience, we aren't psychic. So, you know, it's, you're not going to hurt a massage therapist feelings by saying, Hey, that's too much pressure. Hey, I don't really like that. 
you know, and you're going to feel a lot better because then you're going to get the treatment. You're going to get the work that you actually want. And if you're if something's feeling weird and you start to tense up, then it's, it's literally undoing. It's the opposite. I always say a bad massage is worse than no massage. So just a heads up out there that really people, you know, it's okay to say something, even during the massage It's totally, you know, you should be kind of almost an active participant. I mean, you want to relax and everything, but if something is wrong, say something, definitely. You're not going to hurt our feelings. You are not going to hurt our feelings. I love that. And so that's, I mean, Massage therapy is great. There are many benefits, which includes improving blood flow, reducing muscular adhesions, and allowing your muscles to move in a way that it should be. As a result, it can be a huge, a huge, huge uh, way to reduce the pain, especially when it comes to sciatica. And the thing is, is that it's not just a magic pill. When you get your massage, you have action steps to follow through, whether it be stretching or moving correctly. And there are many massage therapists out there. And the best way to find a massage therapist is initially going through your friends, but then ultimately figuring out who is going to be the best person for you. And you won't know until you actually have the opportunity to communicate your needs with that specific person. Luckily for me, I was able to find my man, Dennis, who was able to give me an awesome massage and I'll continue to go uh, as long as I live in the area. And so Dennis, I really appreciate your time in this evening, man, sharing, sharing the, the amazing art of, of what you do, man. So I really appreciate it um, for, for the folks who are, are in the area or want to hear more, just get in touch with you, Dennis, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Absolutely. So actually, I'm, I'm in a bit of a transition right now. So I no longer have a home based spa that I'm working at. Um, but I am will probably be taking some private clients. So if you want to get a hold of me, I have an email address. It's just a uh, Murphy massage Marin at gmail.com. You can send me an email there. and We can kind of figure out a time that works best for everybody. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and put Dennis's uh, email in the link in the description today. So then that way you can reach out to him at any time. So Dennis, thanks a lot for coming in. Thank you so much for having me on here, really. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you got some help from today's podcast. And for more info, check us out at ifixyoursciatica.com. Have a fantastic and pain-free day. No patient-therapist relationship is formed by listening to this podcast. We are not providing medical advice and all information should be confirmed by a medical provider.